The Little Lame Prince. Chapter One. Yes, he was the most beautiful prince that ever was born. Of course, being a prince, people said this. But it was true. Besides, when he looked at the candle, his eyes had an expression of earnest inquiry, quite startling in a newborn baby. His nose, there was not much of it, certainly, but what there was seemed an aquiline shape. His complexion was a charming, healthy purple. He was round and fat, straight-limbed, and long. In fact, a splendid baby, and everybody was exceedingly proud of him, especially his father and mother, the king and queen of no man's land, who had waited for him during their happy reign of ten years, now made happier than ever to themselves and their subjects by the appearance of a son and heir. The only person who was not quite happy was the king's brother the hair presumptive who would have been king one day had the baby not been born but as his majesty was very kind to him and even rather sorry for him in so much that at the queen's request, he gave him a dukedom almost as big as a county. The crown prince, as he was called, tried to seem pleased also, and let us hope he succeeded. The prince's christening was to be a grand affair, according to the custom of the country. There were chosen for him four and twenty godfathers and godmothers, who each had to give him a name and promise. to do their utmost for him. When he came of age, he himself had to choose the name, 
and the godfather or godmother that he liked the best for the rest of his days. Meantime, all was rejoicing. Subscriptions were made among the rich to give pleasure to the poor. Dinners in town halls for the working men. Tea parties in the streets for their wives. And milk and bun feasts for the children in the school rooms, the school rooms. For no man's land, though I cannot point it out in any map or read of it in any history, was, I believe, much like our own or many another country. As for the palace, which was no different from other palaces, it was clean, turned out of the windows, as people say, with the preparations going on. The only quiet place in it was the room which though the prince was six weeks old his mother the queen had never quitted nobody said she was ill however it would have been so inconvenient And as she said nothing about it herself, but lay pale and placid, giving no trouble to anybody, nobody thought much about her. All the world was absorbed in admiring the baby. The christening day came at last. And it was as lovely as the prince himself. All the people in the palace were lovely too, or thought themselves so. In the elegant new clothes which the queen, who thought of everybody, had taken care to give them from the ladies in waiting down to the poor little kitchen maid. Who looked at herself in her pink cotton gown and thought, doubtless, that there never was such a pretty girl as she. By six in the morning, all the royal household had dressed itself in its very best, and then the little prince was dressed in his best his magnificent christening robe, which, proceeding his royal highness, did not like at all, but kicked and screamed like any common baby. When he had a little calm down, They carried him to be looked at by the queen. His mother, 
who, though her royal robes had been brought and laid upon the bed, was, as everybody well knew, quite unable to rise and put them on. She admired her baby very much, kissed and blessed him, and lay looking at him, as she did for hours sometimes, when he was placed beside her fast asleep, then she gave him up with a gentle smile. And saying she hoped he would be very good, that it would be a very nice christening, and all the guests would enjoy themselves, turned peacefully over on her bed saying nothing more to anybody. She was a very uncomplaining person, the queen, and her name was Dolores. Everything went on exactly as if she had been present. All even the king himself had grown used to her absence, for she was not strong. And for years had not joined in any gaieties. She always did her royal duties, but as to pleasures, they could go on quite well without her, or it seemed so. The company arrived, great and notable persons, in this and neighboring countries. Also, the four and twenty godfathers and godmothers who had been chosen with care as the people who would be most useful to his royal highness should he ever want friends which did not seem likely what such want could possibly happen to the heir of the powerful monarch of no man's land. They came walking two and two, with their coronets on their heads, being dukes and duchesses, princes and princesses, or the like. They all kissed the child and pronounced the name each had given him. Then the four and twenty names were shouted out with great energy by six heralds, one after the other, and afterward written down to be preserved in the state records. in readiness for the next time they were wanted, which would be either on His Royal Highness's coronation or his funeral. Soon the ceremony was over, and everybody satisfied, except, perhaps, the little prince himself, 
who moaned faintly under his christening robes, which nearly smothered him. In truth, though very few knew, the prince in coming to the chapel had met with a slight disaster. His nurse, not his ordinary one, but the state nurse maid, an elegant and fashionable young lady of rank, whose duty it was to carry him to and from the chapel had been so occupied in arranging her train with one hand while she held the baby with the other that she stumbled and let him fall just at the foot of the marble staircase To be sure, she contrived to pick him up again the next minute, and the accident was so slight it seemed hardly worth speaking of. Consequently, nobody did speak of it. The baby had turned deadly pale, but did not cry. So no person a step or two behind could discover anything wrong. Afterward, even if he had moaned, the silver trumpets were loud enough. to drown his voice. It would have been a pity to let anything trouble such a day of felicity. So, after a minute's pause, the procession had moved on. Such a procession the heralds in blue and silver, pages in crimson and gold, and a troop of little girls in dazzling white carrying baskets of flowers, which they strewed all the way before the nurse and child. Finally, the four and twenty godfathers and godmothers, as proud as possible, and so splendid to look at that they would have quite extinguished their small godson, merely a heap of lace and muslin with a baby face inside. Had it not been for a canopy of white satin and ostrich feathers, which was held over him wherever he was carried. Thus, 
with the sun shining on them through the painted windows, they stood, the king and his train on one side, the prince and his attendants on the other. As pretty a sight as ever was seen out of Fairyland. It's just like Fairyland, whispered the eldest little girl to the next eldest. As she shook the last rose out of her basket, and I think the only thing the prince wants now is a fairy godmother. Does he? said a shrill but soft and not unpleasant voice behind. And there was seen among the group of children somebody not a child yet no bigger than a child somebody whom nobody had seen before and who certainly had not been invited for she had no christening clothes on so what's happening here, boys? They have this beautiful christening party for the little baby. Everyone's having a great time. But who is this person? It's not a child, but this person, this girl, is no bigger than a child. Who is she? How come no one had seen her before? Let's find out. She was a little old woman dressed all in gray. Gray gown, gray hooded cloak, of a material excessively fine, and a tint that seemed perpetually changing, like the gray of an evening sky. Her hair was gray, and her eyes also. Even her complexion had a soft gray shadow over it. But there was nothing unpleasantly old about her. And her smile was as sweet and childlike as the prince's own which stole over his pale little face the instant she came near enough to touch him. Take care. Don't let the baby fall again. The grand young lady nurse started flushing angrily. Who spoke to me? How did anybody know? I mean, what business has anybody? Then, frightened, but still speaking in a much sharper tone, then I hope young ladies of rank are in the habit of speaking. Old woman, you will be kind enough not to say the baby, but the prince. Keep away, his royal highness is just going to sleep. Nevertheless, I must kiss him. I am his godmother. You, cried the elegant lady nurse, you, 
repeated all the gentlemen and ladies in waiting. You echoed the heralds and pages. And they began to blow the silver trumpets in order to stop all further conversation. The prince's procession formed itself for returning. The king and his train having already moved off toward the palace. But on the topmost step of the marble stairs stood, right in front of all the little old women clothed in gray. She stretched herself on tiptoe by the help of her stick and gave the little prince three kisses. This is intolerable, cried the young lady nurse, wiping the kisses off rapidly with her lace handkerchief. Such an insult to his royal highness. Take yourself out of the way, old woman, or the king shall be informed immediately. The king knows nothing of me, more's the pity, replied the old woman with an indifferent air, as if she thought the loss was more on his majesty's side than hers. My friend in the palace is the king's wife. Kings have not wives, but queens, said the lady nurse with a contemptuous air. You are right, replied the old woman. Nevertheless, I know her majesty well, and I love her and her child. And since you dropped him on the marble stairs, this she said in a mysterious whisper, which made the young lady treble in spite of her anger. I choose to take him for my own and be his godmother, ready to help him whenever he wants me. You help him? cried all the group breaking into shouts of laughter to which the little old woman paid not the slightest attention. Her soft gray eyes were fixed on the prince, who seemed to answer to the look, smiling again and again in the causeless, aimless fashion that Babies do smile. His Majesty must hear of this, said a gentleman in waiting. His Majesty will hear quite enough news in a minute or two, said the old woman sadly. And again, stretching up to the little prince, she kissed him on the forehead solemnly. So who is this old woman with all the gray? The gray clothes, the gray hair? She says she knows the queen, but nobody else knows her. She's one of the baby prince's godmothers, but nobody knows her.
Maybe the queen really does know her. Be called by a new name which nobody has ever thought of. Be Prince Dolor in memory of your mother, Dolores. In memory of? Everybody started at the ominous phrase and also at a most terrible breach of etiquette which the old woman had committed. In no man's land, neither the king nor the queen was supposed to have was was supposed to have any Christian name at all. They dropped it on their coronation day, and it never was mentioned again till it was engraved on their coffins when they died. Old woman, you are exceedingly ill-bred, cried the eldest lady in waiting, much horrified. How you could know the fact passes. My comprehension. But even if you did know it, how dared you presume to hint that her most gracious majesty is called Dolores. Was called Dolores, said the old woman with a tender solemnity. The first gentleman called the gold stick in waiting, raised it to strike her, and all the rest stretched out their hands to seize her. But the gray mantle melted from between their fingers like air, and before anybody had time to do anything more, there came a heavy, muffled, startling sound. The great bell of the palace, the bell which was only heard on the death of some one of the royal family, and for as many times as he or she was years old, began to toll. They listened. Mute and horror-stricken. Someone counted. One. Two. Three. Four. Up to nine and twenty. Just the queen's age. Oh my goodness. Did the queen pass away? They only ring that bell if someone in the royal family passes away. And they rang it 29 times because the queen's 29. Oh my goodness, who is this woman? How did she know that the queen passed away? It was indeed the queen. Her majesty was dead. In the midst of the festivities, she had slipped away out of her new happiness and her old sufferings, not few nor small, sending away all her women to see the grand sight.
at least they said afterward in excuse that she had done so and it was very like her to do it she had turned with her face to the window whence one could just see the tops of the distant mountains the beautiful mountains as they were called where she was born so gazing she had quietly died when the little prince was carried back to his mother's room there was no mother to kiss him and though he did not know it there would be for him no mother's kiss any more as for his godmother the little old woman in gray who called herself so whether she melted into air like her gown when they touched it or whether she flew out of the chapel window or slipped through the doorway among the bewildered crowd nobody knew nobody ever thought about her only the nurse the ordinary homely one coming out of the prince's nursery in the middle of the night in search of a cordial to quiet his continual moan saw sitting in the doorway something which she would have thought a mere shadow had she not seen shining out of it two eyes gray and soft and sweet she put her hand before her own screaming loudly When she took them away, the old woman was gone. What? How did that happen? She thought she saw the, the nurse thought she saw the, the woman in gray. And she put her hand up over her mouth and screamed. But when she moved her hand, the old woman was gone. Who is this woman? How did she disappear before? Did she fly away or did she just slip out the door before anybody could see her? How did her cloak disappear? How did she know the queen? How did this woman in gray know the queen died? How did she disappear in the hallway like this in the middle of the night when the nurse was looking for something to help the baby stay quiet? Who is this woman? I don't know. Maybe we'll find out when we get to continue reading in chapter 2. You like it so far, boys? Remember, Daddy's working. We're keeping quiet. I hope you guys like the story so far. You guys are my little princes. This is Daddy. Smiling, because you boys make me happy. You better be on your best behavior. You better be sitting and listening and reading the words. This is Mommy. 
I love mommy. She's happy too. This is Michael. He's smiling too. And this is John. He's smiling too. There are one, two, three, four people in our family. And I love all of my family with a big heart. Uh, you know what? Let me make that even let me make that even better. Let me make a nice big red heart. I love Michael and John. Kisses and hugs. Kisses and hugs. Kisses and hugs. I hope you boys are enjoying the story about the prince and this old woman in gray. I don't know who she is either. She says she knows the queen. She says she's one of the godmothers. She knew that the queen had passed away. Somehow her gray cloak disappeared when they tried to grab her, and she disappeared too. Did she fly out the window, or did she slip out the door? We don't know. And here she was in the palace in the middle of the night. The prince was crying, and the nurse went to get, her a little, get the baby a little medicine. And when she was in the hallway, she saw the woman in gray standing there. She screamed. But when she stopped screaming, the woman in gray was gone. Where did she go? Who was this old woman? That was this last part we just read. This last sentence of chapter one here. When she took her hands away, the old woman was gone. Where did this old woman in gray go? I have no idea. We're going to have to find out as we continue reading next time in chapter 2. If daddy's not downstairs yet, boys, you sit on the couch or you sit on the floor right there in the living room and you play nicely. Okay? Best behavior. You can play with your toys, but be on your best behavior. Stay in the living room. I'll be down soon. I love you.